LMC Truck has been selling paint education DVDs on how to do your own paint and body work for many years. Lots of people go the DIY route, and they're good videos, but that's not the best case scenario for everybody. The other alternative is to drop the keys and your truck off at a shop and just have them do everything, and that's fine. Those are two great options, but certainly not the only way to get a new finish on your truck. I'm going to show you how to participate in your own paint job. Do some simple body prep, even some dent repair, and even high quality priming, all without the expensive setup that most body shops have to use. The truth is, you can save a lot of money doing simple things, simple tasks, things that you can do on your own, and just let a qualified shop do the heavy lifting. So the first thing is we're going to go over some simple prep steps on how some of the damage on our truck can be fixed. We showed you how to mark out and identify damage on the truck. We've got little squigglies and circles drawn all over this vehicle. I call that a dent map. So none of them are very big. They're all about the same size. So for all intents and purposes, we're going to treat one like the rest of them. It's the same procedure for all these little dents. So we're going to focus right there on that one. We're going to prep the surface with our 36 grit sandpaper. Since we're making a little bit of dust, protect our respiratory system. So interesting things are happening right here. Look at this. We've got a dark spot and we've got sand scratches all the way around it. That confirms that we've got our dent identified in the right place. All right. Now we've got our low spot exposed. So I'm going to get the paint off of that low spot. And I'm sanding in an opposite direction. Once you add the hardener, you've got about six minutes to fully blend before it starts to gel. When you're mixing, make sure that you're blending and folding, not stirring. This minimizes air pockets. Always read on the instructions and make sure that your body filler is compatible with bare steel. Ours is. Once you're blended to where you don't see the stripes, start with a really tight wipe of the surface. This promotes adhesion and gets the filler down into those harsh and heavy sand scratches. Once that's done, add another layer on top for thickness. Then you can blend it out using fingertip pressure to smooth and blend slightly into the surrounding area, but past your dent. We've got our dent wiped. We've got a six to 10 minute wait time before we can check it out and start sanding. We're ready to start sanding. So we're taking the same 36 grit sanding block and Here again, we're seeing our translucent edges. Feels really flat. So now I'm going to switch from 80 to 180 and do one more process of refinement. Keep in mind the Paint Education Paint Your Own Truck DVD has hours of detailed instructions on exactly these types of procedures. Start to finish, exactly what to do in real time. This is an overview, but for detailed information, you may want to check out the DVD. That feels nice. So you can see that my tiny little dent that was right here turned into about a one foot square repair area because you always want to blend the repair out. You never want to shoot primer over that super coarse grit sandpaper, so you bring it out. We switch from 36 to 80 to 180. We're flat, dent's gone, ready for primer. It's not uncommon to have light surface rust on a vehicle this old. We've got some stuff on the roof. One of the easiest ways to prep for this is by using a fiber wheel or a stripping disc. We've got ours attached to a cordless drill and we're going to give it a whirl and see how it goes. Remember that when you're stripping large areas of a body panel down to bare steel, you want to make sure and protect the metal, either with a primer within about an hour or with some sort of a surface treatment that creates a barrier between the bare steel and the atmosphere. That way you don't have flash rusting that you have to fix again later. 
All right, so that did a really nice job of getting us down to really good, clean metal with, with no pits. Sometimes you've got to go a little bit farther, but again, the DVDs explain what to do then. For us, we've got a strategy on how to strip all of this surface rust down to bare metal with a cordless drill and a prep disc. We might burn through a couple of batteries, but hey, that's still easy. It's always best to remove anything that your primer and paint might come up against. Grills, taillights, door handles, mirrors, and moldings. It's just part of getting a professional looking repair, and it's what the pro shops do. I'm sanding with 180 grit on a soft pad, trying to see if I can feather the damaged clear coat back into the paint that's not peeling. It takes a little elbow grease, but I'm getting good results quickly. All right, interesting. This right here, the clear coat flew off of there. I got down to the, the factory sealer really quick. Down into here, it took a little bit longer. And here, you can see a nice soft edge around where the color is. So that tells me the two layers are still bonded together and it's still safe to prep and then paint on top of them. Down here, again, it flew off right down. It's deteriorated, it's crusty. Uh, so it flew off and again, we were able to get a nice feather around this edge right here. Interesting thing is this, all of these guys are rock chips. Maybe somebody was cutting the grass beside this truck for 15 years, but all these little white specks, they're rock chips, almost down to the metal. So. The bottom line is this fender, even though there's no body damage, has to be sanded almost all the way down to the metal and then layers built back up again. So we're doing it with a sanding block while you're sanding. And by the way, this only took just a couple of minutes, so it's not going to be a difficult prep. If you're not going to use a sanding block, well, you can use dual action sanders, machines. They're faster. This is a piece of equipment that I found on the internet. This company is called Surf Prep. This is an electric dual action sander that hooks up to either a shop vac or some sort of an internal vacuum system in your shop. Keeps the dust up out of the air and contains it nicely and safely inside the shop vac. It's electric. It's a nice high quality piece of equipment and it's probably about 300 bucks to buy it. However, it keeps you from having to buy a $3,000 air compressor and then a $1,500 air scrubber and then another $300 dual action sander. It's a process. If you want to set up a body shop, well, the equipment is expensive, but it's worth the spend because most of the time it's a one-time expense. But if you don't and you want to do some surface prep anyways, electric tools are a neat alternative. Using a DA, you want to keep the tool as flat as possible to the surface and move slowly at a medium speed with the tool. This is going to give you the best control over what's happening on the surface. I'm using 220 grit, which is going to work fast, but leave a scratch size that works with the primer surfacer that we're about to spray. Obviously, the sander wouldn't fit into the body style line, so I'll bring out the sanding pad again with the same 220 grit sandpaper. So now we've got an evenly sanded surface. All the rock chips are gone. And we're down to a layer of primer that was underneath the paint. It feels pretty good. With the panel sanded, I'll give it a final wipe down with wax and grease remover. I'm going to show you how to prime this, uh, this repaired dent without a giant air compressor. So we've wiped it down. We felt it. It feels nice and flat. Now we're ready for primer. There's different ways to apply body shop primer. The conventional method is to use a giant air compressor with good, clean, dry air and use a paint gun. Mix up your primer, put it in the paint gun, and then spray subsequent coats onto the bodywork. Well, if you're not set up for that, there's really great alternatives that still keep you in the realm of professional catalyzed products that you don't need an air compressor for. And that's why we're using these rattle can catalyzed primers. I've got two primers here. This one is an epoxy primer. If we had gone all the way down to bare metal, it's a really good idea to start with epoxy primer and then do your high build primer. This one here is a high build urethane primer. It's what we're going to use on our dent. The way these things work is really simple. There's a button here that you pull off, you invert the can, you put the button on a little valve that's right here, and when you press down, you hear a pop and then you'll release the catalyst or the hardener into the primer. You shake it up and then 
you spray it like you would a normal catalyzed spray can primer. Warning, 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 because this has hardener in it. You must wear appropriate safety equipment, a paint rated spray mask. I always like to cover my hands and I cover my eyes up too. Our first coat of primer is gonna go all the way to the outside of the zone that we've sanded. That's gonna be coat number one. We're doing a total of three coats of primer. We'll make a pass, do a 50% overlap, make another pass, and we'll cover the damage with 50% overlap passes. Each coat needs to be a full wet coat. I don't want primer overspray to fall on the rest of the truck, especially the cleaned and detailed engine bay. So I'm masking with 18 inch paper all after outlining with masking tape. This primer has a spray cap that gives a flat pattern, just like a professional spray gun. I'm spraying each new pass at a 50% overlap over the last pass to give a smooth and consistent coat on the whole panel. The goal is to have a thick film of several coats deep on these panels so we have something to sand down and refine during the paint prep process. Since this primer has a hardener in it, it will become a much more stable and high build material that typical rattle cans just don't have making it a professional body shop product that comes in a rattle can. That's awesome. Once this is opened and mixed, you've got 48 hours to use what's left in the can. After about two hours, this is going to be ready to sand and block and prep for paint. We got our new tailgate from LMC Truck and it's in perfect condition, including the E-coat on here, Electro Deposition Primer. One thing I always like to do is test the primer, make sure that it's in good shape. LMC truck uses a high quality product, so I know that it is. I'm using lacquer thinner. I can't pull up any color. That tells me the primer is very, very solid. It can't be refloated. It's locked on to the panel. This is a good foundation. Don't be afraid of this. So if you're going to do the prep work for yourself, how do you find a good body shop to take over for you or even do all of the work for you? Here's five simple questions that you need to ask either yourself or the shop directly. How long have you been in business? A business that's been established for a while is going to have a track record of excellent work or a track record of work that you don't want to be associated with. Can you give me referrals? Any shop worth their salt is going to have work that's out there in the public that they're proud of and they should be happy to give you several referrals. Do you have liability insurance? Liability insurance is important for a shop to have, especially a professional working shop that works for the public, just in case there's a catastrophic event like a fire or damage to the building that could damage your vehicle along with it. You need to be covered. What is this going to cost? There's no such thing as a fixed price on auto body repairs. It's all done in estimates. But any shop should be able to give you a range of cost as to what the project is going to cost based off of the time estimate that they give you. You should be able to get an answer. And how long will this process take? Again, labor is time. Everybody has a wristwatch. Everybody has a calendar. A good shop should be able to let you know what their schedule is, when they can take the work in, how long it should take while it's there, and when you should be able to reasonably expect the work finished and returned. You need to feel good about leaving your truck in somebody else's hands. If you don't, keep looking, keep walking. But us, I think, we found the perfect shop to take over our project.